from which of the following ethane can be prepared okay and we have been given four options and we have to find the reactant which will give ethane as a product so the first reactant the first option that has been given to us is methyl iodide which is what which is ch3i so in the reactant we have one carbon atom and in the product what do we have we have two carbon atoms so which reaction is that in which we have alkyl halide as the reactant and it gives alkene as a product and we get twice the number of carbon atoms in the product well that is the woods reaction right what happens in the woods reaction so two molecules of alkyl halide they combine in the presence of sodium dry ether and what do we get we get the alkene rr that is the higher alkene with even number of carbon atoms and what else do we get we get nax right so if we start with methyl iodide which has been given to us so if we take two molecules of methyl iodide it it would be i right in the presence of sodium and dry ether what do we get here we'll get ch3 ch3 which is what which is ethane plus two molecules of nai because sodium is taken as an excess here excess here okay and we have ch3 as r so we get the product as rr which is ethane so yes option a is absolutely correct you can get ethane from methyl iodide okay now let's check out option b which is propanoic acid okay which what is that that is ch3 ch2 c double bond o h so double bond o o h okay and how, what exactly which reaction would will give you ethane from propanoic acid so if you see this you have three carbon atoms in the reactant and how many do you want you want two carbon atoms in the product so which reaction is that which has which takes you know uh, acid carboxylic acid as the reactant and we get product as an alkene with one carbon less well that is our soda lime reaction right so soda lime reaction what happens in that reaction so if we have r c o o h in the presence of n o h and calcium oxide quick lime and if we heat it what happens there is removal of co2 molecule and what do we get we get r h that is the alkene and that co2 molecule that reacts with n o h right so it reacts with n o h to give us what to give us n a 2 c o 3 right so what would happen if we have propanoic acid as a reactant so that would be c h 3 c h 2 c double bond o o h plus n o h in the presence of c a o and we'll heat it so c o 2 will be evolved so will uh, that will react with noh to give na2co3 and what else is left we'll have ch3 ch2 and this h to give us what to give us ethane that is what we wanted right so that makes option b also our correct option so what is option c that both a and b are correct absolutely none of these no that is not correct because we just found out that we can prepare ethane from both methyl iodide and propanoic acid so yes option c is our correct option find the n factor in the following chemical change kmno4 in acidic medium gives mn2 plus well this is a very easy question so what do we know about n factor well one of the definitions of n factor is that it is the net change in the oxidation state of the molecule for which you want to find out the n factor of right so what do we have here we have kmno4 and it in the acidic medium it is going to mn2 plus 
Potassium, we know it's going to be, it, it will be in one plus one state in the reaction as well as in the reactant as well as in the product state. Okay, what, what about oxygen? Well, this oxygen will be balanced in the form of water in the product side. And what do we have? So oxidation state of oxygen is minus 2 in water. In KMnO4, it's also minus 2. So the net change, since potassium and oxygen atom, both of them, they have same oxidation state in reactant as well as in the product state. So we are only now concerned with the change in oxidation state of manganese atom. Okay, so let's first I find out the oxidation state of manganese in the react in the KMnO4 in the reactant side. Okay, so we have potassium as plus one, manganese as X, and we have four atoms of oxygen with minus two, one with minus two oxidation state, and zero is the net charge. So it comes out to be X plus one minus eight is zero. So X comes out to be plus seven. So oxidation state of manganese in KMnO4 is what? Plus 7. And what is the oxidation state of manganese in, in Mn2 plus? Well, it is equal to plus 2. It's very evident here. Right. So what is the net change? Net change is of 5. So the end factor for KMnO4 is 5. And let's see which option does it match. Well, it matches option D and that is the correct option. Out of 2,2-dimethylbutane, two, two 2-methylpentane two and 2,3-dimethylbutane, which one has the highest boiling point? And we have been given the decreasing order of the boiling points of among these three in the four options. So what does boiling point depend upon? Well, boiling point is directly proportional. So this is boiling point is directly proportional to the molar mass. So more the molar mass, more would, will be the intermolecular interactions, right? And more energy it would require to break those interactions and higher would be the temperature. That means higher the boiling point. Okay, what other factor does boiling point depend upon? Well, it is directly proportional to Van der Waals interactions or Van der Waals forces. Well, that is very much obvious, very like, it's a common sense, right? Because more the Van der Waals interactions, more, the, you know, interactions between the molecules, more energy would be required to break those interactions. More in the sense, I would say, stronger the interactions, stronger the interactions, more energy would be required to break those interactions and higher would be the temperature that makes the boiling point higher. Okay. What else? Well, boiling point is directly proportional to the surface area. So, more the surface area, more would be the interactions. Same, exactly same logic. More interactions and more energy required to break them. What about branching? Well, boiling point is inversely proportional to branching. If a molecule is branched, then it, it has a compact structure, which makes the interactions, the Van der Waals interactions, much less. And this results in decrease in the boiling point. Okay, now after we know all these, all this information, all the factors that boiling point depend upon, now let's have a look at the three molecules that are being given to us. So the first one is, 2,2-dimethylbutane. So butane is what? We'll have four carbon atoms in the parent chain and we have 2,2-dimethyl, two, two, two methyl groups at the second carbon. Okay, what else? Well, we have 2-methylpentane. Okay, so that would mean five carbon atoms in the parent chain and we have one methyl group at the second carbon. And then we have 2,3-dimethylbutane. Okay, so that is two, one carbon at the second position, second carbon atom and one methyl group at the third carbon atom. So these are the molecules that are given to us. So if you look at these molecules, all of them have the same molecular formula. That is what? 
that is C6H14. That means their molar mass is going to be same. So this factor cancels out. What about the Van der Waals forces? Well, if you look at these molecules, all of these molecules have similar type of interactions, that is London forces. So even you can't compare them on the basis of Van der Waals forces. What else is there? Well, we have the branching. Yes, so branching is different in these three molecules. The most branched one is what? Is 2,2-dimethylbutane. So this will have the least boiling point. Right, so this will have the least boiling point because more the branching, less would, less would be the boiling point. Okay, and 2-methylpentane. 2-methylpentane has the least branching. So that, that would mean, that would mean it has the highest, highest boiling point among these three. So what would be the order? It will be second, that is 2-methylpentane followed by first, that is 2-2-dimethylbutane followed by third, which is 2 3 dimethyl butane. Let's see which option does it match. So, 2 methyl pentane has to have the highest. So, that makes option B obviously not correct. So, option B has 2 methyl pentane as the highest, yes, followed by 2 2 dimethyl butane, and then followed by 2 3 dimethyl butane. This is also wrong, right? Because 2 2 dimethyl butane will have the lowest boiling point. So, option B is also wrong. What about option C? Well, this is also wrong. Why? Because we need 2-methylbutane to have the highest boiling point. So let's have a look at option D. So it has 2-methylpentane two as the highest boiling point, followed by 2-3-dimethylbutane, followed by 2-2-dimethylbutane. And that's what we just came to. We just discussed that, yes, this is the correct order. So the correct option to this question is option D. An aqueous solution containing 0.1 gram KiO3, formula, formula weight 214, was treated with an excess of Ki solution. The solution was acidified with HCl. The liberated I2 consumed 55 ml of thiosulfate solution. Calculate molarity of sodium thiosulfate solution. Okay, so if you look at this information that is given to you, it's huge information, right? But one thing is very, very clear. You have been given what? You have been given the volume of thiosulfate solution. You need to find what? You need to find molarity of thiosulfate solution. So what do you need? You need the number of moles of thiosulfate solution being consumed. That's exactly what you need and you'll get your answer. So now, let's see what all information has been given to us step by step. So KiO3, it reacts with what? Ki in the acidic medium to give us what? I2. I2 is liberated plus K2O. So this reaction, you guys, you need to remember this reaction. No one is going to give you the reaction in the exam. And you need to remember the balance reaction to save up your time. Okay. So let's see, what do we have here? We have, so we'll have five in front of Ki. I'm just writing the exact balanced equation because, because I have that liberty, but you don't, okay? So I'll write three here. Let's see if it is balanced or not, okay? So there are six potassium atoms on the left. So I put three to make six potassium atoms on the right. And we have three oxygen atoms on both sides. And how many iodine atoms do we have? Do we have six iodine atoms on both the sides? So yes, this balance, this equation is now balanced. Now I2, that is evolved in the first reaction, it reacts with Na2S2O3 to give what? To give NaI plus, Na, plus Na2S4O6. Okay, now let's balance this. Very easy, it's very easy. So we have two iodine atoms on the left, so I've put two in front of NaI. This makes four, four sodium atoms on the right, so I'm putting two in front of Na2S2O3, and this balances my reaction. 
Okay, what else information has been given? That we have 0.1 gram of KiO3 and we have 55 ml of Na2S2O3. Okay, so now what are these two equations telling us? Well, it is telling us that the one mole of KiO3 is reacting with five moles of Ki to give three moles of I2 and three moles of K2O. And whatever the number of moles of I2 that are being liberated in the first reaction that are being consumed in the second reaction. And if you can see what, you can see that one mole of I2 in the second reaction is reacting with two moles of Na2S2O3 to give two moles of NaI and one mole of Na2S4O6. Okay, now let's write this reactions, this equations, right, to find out the relationship through which we can find the number of moles of Na2S2O3. Okay, so we can say that number of moles of KiO3, those are equal to what? That is equal to 1 by 3rd, the number of moles of I2 from the first equation. And from the second equation, what we can say that the number of moles of I2, they are equal to what? Half the number of moles of Na2S2O3. Now let's put the value of number of moles of I2 from second into 1. Okay, so what do we get? We get N, that is number of moles of KiO3, that is equal to what? 1 by 3 into 1 by 2 into N, that is number of moles of Na2S2O3. So number of moles of KiO3 is what it is, 1 by 6 times number of moles of Na2S2O3. And we need to find out the number of moles of Na2S2O3, Na2S2O3, right? So that will be equal to what? Number of moles of Na2S2O3 will be equal to 6 times the number of moles of KiO3. Why I have arrived at this at this relationship because I know the num the weight of KiO3 and I know its formula weight so I can easily found find out the number of moles of KiO3 from where I'll find the number of moles of Na2S2O3 that was the whole idea behind this so it will be equal to what 6 into and what will be the formula for number of moles of KiO3 given weight upon formula weight right so given weight is what? 0.1 and formula weight that is given to us is 214. Okay, now what do we need to find? We need to find the molarity and molarity is equal to what? Number of moles of Na2S2O3 because that's uh, molarity of thiosulfate solution. That is what we want to find out, right? And what volume? in liter right okay so what is the number of moles of Na2S2O3 that is 6 into 0.1 divided by 214 and what is the volume that is 55 ml not in liter so what would we do we'll divide 55 by 1000 so it will go into the numerator and we'll get 1000 in our numerator okay now let's write this 0.1 as 1 divided by 10 so 0 0 cancels Okay, next we have 11 here and 200, right? 5, uh, five 11s are 55, 5 to the 10 and 20. So this will not be 200, it will be 20. Okay, next up, what do we have? We have 10 here and 107, I've divided by 2. Okay, let's approximate now because right now I can't go further. This is the maximum that I've come to. So I'm approximating it as 108. And I'm writing 6 as 2 into 3. So this would be what? 3, 3 is a 9, 3, 6 is a 18. And 2, 1 is a 2. I could have divided it by 6 also. 2, 1 is a 2 and 2, 6, 2, 8 is a 16. 5 and 9 here. Okay, so let's see what do we have. We have 5 divided by 99. Can we approximate to it as 5 divided by 100? Right, we can. So whatever answer we are going to get, that is going to be slightly more than what we are, you know, approximating it to. Why? Because we have changed the denominator. If we have increased the denominator, denominator that means the R approximation value is coming out to be what is coming out to be slightly less than the actual value.
okay so this if we are approximating it it becomes what 5 divided by 100 so that is 0 0.05 molarity molar so we have 0 0.05 molar solution of thiosulfate let's see if it matches any one of our options so the first option is 0 0.5 obviously it's wrong 0.25 is also wrong 0 0.01 is also wrong but yes we got our correct option so that is option d Calculate the H plus ion concentration of a 0.1 normal weak monobasic acid. The value of dissociation constant is 4 into 10 raised to the power minus 10. Okay, so we have been given what? We have been given a weak monobasic acid. So it will dissociate in the aqueous medium to give what? To give H plus ions in the aqueous medium plus A minus ions. Okay, and this will be a reversible reaction. Why? Because this is a weak monobasic acid. Okay, so at T is equal to 0, let's assume the concentration of HA, that is the monobasic acid, is C. So at T is equal to equilibrium, at T is equal to 0, the concentration of HA is C. And at T is equal to equilibrium, what happens? It dissociates. So if C alpha dissociates, what is left? So, it, what left is C minus C alpha and since it dissociates C alpha, so what would become the concentration of H plus and A minus at equilibrium? It would be C alpha, C alpha, where alpha is what? Alpha is the degree of dissociation. And what do we know? We know that Ka, that is the dissociation constant, that is equal to C alpha into C alpha divided by C minus C alpha. So this will be equal to C square alpha square C into 1 minus alpha. I have taken C common. So this C cancels out. So we get C alpha square upon 1 minus alpha as Ka. Now if you look at the value of dissociation constant, this is very, very, very low. Which makes what? Which makes alpha value very, very, very low. So alpha is very, very small as compared to 1. So what do we do? We approximate and we write it as Ka is equal to uh, C alpha square. So since alpha is very very less than equal to 1, so the denominator becomes what? It becomes 1. So what is alpha? Alpha is under root Ka divided by C. K is what? K is what? K is the dissociation constant, right? And we have been given the value 4 into 10 is power minus 10. And what is C? Concentration. Well, we have been given 0 0.01 normal acid usually we take concentrations in these questions in terms of molarity and since it's a monobasic acid the normality will be equal to molarity why well we know normality is equal to molarity into n factor but for monobasic acid what do we know that n factor is equal to one so that makes normality is equal to molarity so here would be divided by 0 0.01 and under root so this is under root of 4 into 10 to the power minus 10 divided by 10 to the power minus 2. This comes out to be what? 4 into 10 to the power minus 8. That is 2 into 10 to the power minus 4. This is the value of alpha. What do we need to calculate? We need to calculate H plus concentration. And what is H plus concentration? Well, that is equal to C alpha at equilibrium. So that becomes very easy. We just need to calculate the value of C alpha. C is what? C is 0 0.01, right? And what is alpha? Alpha is 2 into 10 to the power minus 4. So this becomes what? This becomes 2 into 10 to the power minus 6. And this is the concentration. So this will be what? Moles per liter, right? Because normality here will be equal to molarity. Okay, let's check which option does it match. Well, it matches option A, which is the correct option.